So our team uh, is located in the Jacksonville office. We have our headquarters in Jacksonville, Florida. We also have our Petro headquarters, and it's in the St. Petersburg, Clearwater area. Um, but we have people working all over the country. So this team has been focused and specialized on EMV at the pump and our Petro solutions for a few years now. Um, and we're, we're really now, you know, hitting the market. We've got a bunch we're going to talk about, but I want to give you a little background. So the petroleum market, you know, initially was given a two-year extension in 2015 to accept EMV at the pump. Uh, 2017 came around um, and they were given a further extension. This is because, you know, there's lots of different complexities and setups. They, there was going to issues with the amount of technicians available to do installs, the cost of them, certifications being ready, um, you know, all different types of, of things that kind of made it a more complex, you know, transition. So 2017 came around and extended to 2020. So most recently on this front, the Petro associations, the merchant advisory group, everyone went to the card networks, wrote letters in January asking for a delay again, and they were not granted a delay. They said, you know, what did you do for the past three years? You know, we've had all these opportunity, um, and, you know, the banks were just kind of sick of paying the, all the fraud and chargebacks. Because come the deadline, the banks are saying, if you don't upgrade to EMV, the liabilities, the fraud backs to charge are now on you, the gas station owner. So another most recent update was last week, in the midst of COVID and everything that's going on, the advisory groups wrote letters to the major card networks, again, asking for a delay, um, and Visa responded back and said, no. They said, we're monitoring the situation, but this time there will be no extension of the deadline. So it still remains this October 1st, 2020, about six months away. There's a really cool countdown on our website. Um, and basically at that point, if gas stations don't have EMV technology at their pump to accept the transaction, they're hit with the broad liability chargeback if that takes place. Um, and according to the Connexus survey, they've you know, said there's gonna be about $451 million of fraud that's probably gonna go down because of you know, the, uh, the COVID and things that are happening in the market, but it's still an exorbitant amount of money um, and the average gas station will not be able to afford the roughly 20 to $30,000 per year in that extra you know, chargebacks and fraud that the banks usually paid. So that's the solution, uh, sorry, the, the, the climate and, and what those deadlines look like. And here's sort of what the market looks like now. Uh, this is called full integration. So odds are if you go to a gas station, uh, this is what is happening behind the scenes. You put your card in the pump and that pump has underground cables that go to a four court controller. And this device has a payment app and that's where it goes to the processor. Same thing goes for inside the store. If you put your card uh, in the payment terminal and you wanna buy a sandwich and put 20 bucks on pump eight, uh, it's gonna go underground to the four court to the processor, or not underground, just it's connected via hardwire, and then go directly to the processor for a payment. So that is a very wide and broad PCI scope. There's a lot of uh, at-risk environment there, and that's where you're seeing people skimming at the pump, you know, getting access to the forecourt, and then where you see these hacks and malware going into the point of sale and getting into the forecourt controller. So every the payments go through the forecourt, and that's why that environment is so at risk. So that's what the market and the environment looks like today. Down payments, we took a completely different look at this. So I'm gonna explain this um, so that it makes sense, but essentially what we've done is we've put a payment device in the pump. So I'm gonna jump ahead real quick. This is the PAX IM20. And the PAX IM20 is an unattended device. It can work in different environmental uh, temperatures, both high and low. It's been tested um, you know, th through the ringer. It accepts Wi-Fi, contactless, NFC, all the different kind of wireless transactions we talk about, which are key. You know, I was on a Petro marketing call and people are using Q-tips to touch the buttons, right? So anything that you can do to not touch these things. So you can tap, you can, um, you know, use your mobile wallet. So if you have, you know, your debit card like I do on, in an Apple wallet or something like that, you can just go near it. Um, it does all these different things. So anyways, we've taken that payment device and we've retrofit it to a door, a panel, made specifically for the pump types. And there's two major elephants in the room, Gilbarco and Wayne. There's a few other pump manufacturers, but those are the largest. So what we've done is we've looked at those major pump types, the models, and we've worked with a third party, and we have created these kits where we could put our payment device on that panel that fits perfectly to that pump and retrofit it. So in our environment, when you put a card in the pump, it doesn't go to get through cables to the four core controller, it's actually going via wireless in a P2P e tunnel to the processor and it's getting the payment. So they have to have Wi-Fi, which we'll get into some of the variables, but that's the kind of flow up to the processor, back to the IM20 in the pump. 
And then what we have is inside the store, a bridge. So you'll see on the screen here, it's a PAX A80. I'm sure you're familiar with the company, PAX, P-A-X. If you're not, they're a major hardware manufacturer, uh, like an Ingenico or a Veriform, but uh, they're, you know, this is who we work with. So what it does is that bridge lets the payment device, the pump, speak to everything else. It's a one-to-many connection. So if you put your card in the pump, put 20 bucks in, you get the approval, the IM20 speaks to the bridge, which speaks to the four core controller and says, hey, turn on pump eight for 80 bucks, they got the approval. And then you snap your fingers and just like any other transaction, pump eight turns on. And then at the end of all of that, you'll see an arrow going to our cloud. So it'll dump that transaction data, just the, the not the raw card data, but the transaction, you know, what happened so the merchant can see it. And the same is the case for inside the store. If you put your card in the payment device inside the store, it's gonna to go to the processor directly again in that P2P tunnel. And then it's just gonna give an approval message to the forecourt. The bridge is gonna to talk to it and say, hey, activate pump eight for 80 bucks. So we've brought the, what's called semi-integration to, to the pump environment, where no longer is it just a card reader or a CRIND that's taking the data and putting it you know, to the forecourt in that at-risk environment. We're putting a payment device that speaks directly to the processor the pump, and the inside functions the same way. So it's a lot to kind of take in, but that sort of is, is what we're doing on a high level. We also have a point of sale, which we can sell at on certain scenarios during, you know, as you go through this, you'll learn that there's lots of different pump makeups, there's lots of different four court manufacturers and different combinations. But in some cases, we can actually, for most gas stations that don't have a point of sale or just have a pin pad or something very basic, we can, we have a fantastic point of sale that, is, you know, has petrol capability, um, sound POS. And, you know, this also is sold in our retail environment. We've got, you know, selling this in small to medium sized retail businesses, but perfect for the convenience store setting as well. So that's another opportunity for our resellers to make more revenue and cast a wider net by having this option for the, that scenario that, that works out. And when someone signs up for our, our product, the, the resellers get a login, they get a portal. So they can, and also the merchants do too. So they can manage their business. So here's an example of a back office. You can see all the different transactions that took place. It doesn't have the actual numbers, just has the data. Uh, so that you know someone can manage their back office and they can do this from any device and that's big for now too with you know COVID and everything that's going on because with our cloud-based system they can manage their stations remotely you can manage your your merchants remotely with it and it's from any you know device with a web browser so it really promotes not having to go and look at the computer and press report you can do this anywhere Here's another page of the portal, which is really cool. It helps you, you know, see how many, you know, items you have out there, how many merchants you have, the counts, you see the point of sale information, the terminal, and we do an extensive training. This is not one of those things where you get an email and, you know, go set it and do it yourself. We're going to hold your hand. We walk you through it. We do a kickoff call amongst a lot of uh, other different, you know, high touch things. So I talked about this in, you know, a couple different, you know, podcasts and interviews and things like that. But the pain points that people are looking at are they only have a few options these days. You know, option A is the gas station can replace their pumps. And you're talking about $15,000 a pump. We talked about that full integration earlier. So there's cables involved, concrete possibly needs to be ripped up most of the time in that case. Um, you're looking at downtime for the store, they're going to lose revenue. Tanks might be exposed, which might be out of code is a whole plethora of problems and, and I've talked to a lot of these gas station owners at different trade shows and you know just people calling and it's tough because some of them have made the investment spent a lot of money and saved up for a few years and then some are like I don't know what to do because we don't have 200,000 or 150 um, so that's kind of where they're at with that that's that's option one two would be to go to one of the manufacturers and use their retrofits you can look google them you, there's you know the Gilbarco and the Waynes of the world very fantastic large companies. They have their own retrofits, but again, these are going to be a little more cost intensive than our solution. Those are, and this is just rough numbers, but are about between five and 8,000 per side of the pump. So still a cost intensive, you know, environment. Um, it doesn't always take a little bit of time too. It could be, you know, time intensive and that's the option two for them. And three would be our solution. So ours is going to be, again, retrofitting those existing pumps, but we're going to be coming in at a half to a third of, of what those other costs are uh, while having a safer solution. You know, 
hours to install or minutes versus weeks. You know, use your existing point of sale inside. You know, we're talking about a low friction install in some cases where if they've got certain forecourses, certain point of sales, we can just retrofit and, and our bridge and software speaks to everything. So, you know, we're talking, you know, a, a, a semi-quick install, right? Cost, cost effective. And then at the end, cherry on top is it's safer because it's semi-integrated and all your, the card data doesn't live in that environment. So here's an example uh, of a four quart, you know, uh, sorry, a cost of four fuel dispensers in a four pump C store to upgrade. You know, at that 15 grand, you're looking at around 60,000. You're gonna see all other sorts of ancillary charges of, you know, hoses and nozzles and the tanks and sometimes construction. It could be up to 200,000, you know, and not all the time. Sometimes it might be a two pump station and it's 80,000, but it's still a very large expense for people that don't have the time. We're talking six months from now. People need to be able to spend that in some cases. That's what they're being told by their jobber or by their, by their relation, whoever they have. Um, and then, like I mentioned, the re other retrofit kits can be a little more expensive. So here's an example of a pump we upgraded. And this is, a, I believe, an old Gilbarco Encore 500. It used to be a shell station. Um, and what we did was, as you can see, that I'm going to look on the right. That's a sneak preview of, of a product that's coming out in the future. That's our Aries device by PAX. But that panel you see, that actually is perfectly going to fit. That panel right here, this perfectly fits in that pump. And that's why we're able to retrofit it. So we got the hardware, we've got the retrofit kit, and that goes right into the pump. And as you can see, you know, it covers the other payment device and the old options there. It, you know, it's aesthetically pleasing for, for what they want. And at the end of the day, they're trying to upgrade EMV. That's the focus here. Um, and then the device itself, you'll see, you know, you can tap and um, do the NFC and Apple Wallet. And this install can take one to two people. So I'd love to, if I may, introduce one of our team members, Corey Schlegel. Um, he's, I mean, knows the in and out of the business, has been out in the field installing these. Um, and I thought it'd be great to kind of, you know, give an example and first person of what he's done. So Corey, you want to jump in and talk, talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, can you hear me fine? Yeah, you're great. Okay, perfect. So yes, as he's saying that uh, with these kits, it is a relatively easy install. Um, one to two people is sort of stretching it. It typically just takes one person. Uh, as you can see on that uh, kit there on the right, um, it's simply just a plate, a direct replacement plate for what exists there today. So those holes on that plate will match up exactly with the holes on the back of the uh, fuel pump door. Um, so standard, you just go in there, pull, pull the uh, screws out of the old. Um, there's usually about, I would say, six to 10 wires connecting to the uh, back of that panel that you have to unplug. Uh, you put the, the screws back in. We have a wiring kit that plugs directly into the uh, power boards uh, that exist today and you're installed. So when we send these devices out, they already have the payment software on there, they already have the encryption, and they already have the merchant. And why I say merchant is because our devices actually work quite differently from what exists today. So uh, one of the things about our devices is they are direct communication to the processor. Uh, they do this through a PPE connection, uh, so when you insert the card, it actually encrypts that data immediately. It takes that data over Wi-Fi with the encryption, direct to the processor, and then back down to, to our card reader with the authorization. Then after that, the authorization goes into the bridge, which therefore talks to the full court, which then authorizes the fuel pump. So with that being said, what that does is that actually removes now that we have a P2PE device directly on the fuel pump, uh, all the PCI compliance of that fuel pump is now directly on our device itself. And our device itself is fully self-contained. There is no USB plugs. Uh, there is no uh, data cables. There is nothing to break into that uh, device itself. And if you do remove the screws off the device, it's going to self-destruct. And so there, it is a 100% tamper-proof 
uh, P2PE device. Once again, removing the PCI compliance away from the pump and putting it directly on the card reader itself. Um, whenever I've installed these in the field uh, with the kit itself, uh, we're looking at a five minute install per pump. Um, and that's purely by myself. So uh, you can have a full station, uh, say you're using a commander in there and the commander's already in full use, all the pumps are already wired up. All you need to do is swap out your card readers. You can have a full station up and running on EMB compliance within a network. So with that being said, Eric, you can dive on back in. Absolutely. No, I appreciate that. And I want to show another picture of a kit real quick. Hey, Corey, real quick, are the transaction times less or more the same or negligible compared to the today's current environment? I would say we're about the same on transaction time. Um, it, as all EMD transaction times, it all depends on your internet and your connection. Um, we're, we're relatively quick on that because we do the Wi-Fi connection and we don't have to go through any other devices. Um, so we're relatively quick, but uh, if you have a complete new site with all new Cat5 wires going out to your fuel pumps um, and you have a high speed internet, uh, it's relatively the same speed. Okay, appreciate that. Because I know that's something that people sometimes wonder about. And then I'm gonna show you sometimes let me pull this up real quick. Is that pump shot on there? Dwayne? Is it a that that's the Gilbarka Advantage? Um Advantage. that is not yeah. a kit. Cool. That is actually a uh, a the original door that I redid myself by hand. Um, so that's not our plastic kitting, but our plastic kitting for the advantage looks very similar. Uh, it just does not have the indention there for the uh, old card reader. Perfect. Yeah, I just wanted to show another type of example. Okay, I'm going to get back real quick to this. And then we're going to finish things up with a question and answer from the crowd. I wanted to keep it around 30 minutes and then we'll launch a poll at the end, everybody. We have some questions to ask you about, you know, the, the webinar and if we covered things for you. Just one moment. So appreciate that, Corey. It's always good to hear, you know, a first person example of, you know, someone who's actually installed it, you know, knows the gas station owners, understands the, the, the solution and our, our company very much too, obviously. Uh, so really appreciate that. So here's the market opportunity. You know, the 1st of October, this, this October is the uh, shift, the liability. So the gas station owners will now have to pay for the fraud if they don't have EMV. They're estimated about 2 million fueling points in the U.S. And they're saying about only 10 to 15% are EMV capable. And you know, they said even before COVID that about 40% of the market wouldn't upgrade to EMV either because they didn't have the money or they were just going to tough it out. And unfortunately, after kind of sitting in on a lot of these petrol marketing association calls and talking to so many different people in the industry, these skimmers and the fraud, they're going to smoke these stations out that, that don't have the upgrade. And that's just not me trying to be a salesperson, but more just so as a consumer where, you know, if I go to a station, even today, I always look for EMV if I can find it. So you want to be safe as a consumer. So although we are going after right now predominantly unbranded stations, we are working on the background on some, un, uh, on some branded opportunities. But the lowest hanging fruit right now is that we have our product certified to first data bypass, which is about 60 to 65 percent of the market. Um, we're working on Heartland, which is about 20 to 30 percent of the market. But we're going after equipment manufacturers, service station installers, people that work on the pumps, the jobbers, ISOs. And an ISO, if you don't know, is a independent sales organization that sells credit card processing. So First Data has a lot of these ISOs that sell Petro capable processing. So we go after them and we say, hey, here's, here's our hardware, here's the software. And what happens is the jobber or the service station installer or the credit card processing company becomes the reseller. And then they take the, the margin, sorry, the arc buy rates and uh, mark them up to the gas station owner and invoice them. Um, we've got a question here from 
Rod Smith about Phillips 66. Uh, Corey, did you want to talk about that? Sure. So, uh, what is this? He was asking the he was asking about the Philip 66 branded okay. stores if that's something. So we are working with Philip 66 and many others to get on their processing. Um, we are not currently available for their processing at this point, um, but I can tell you that Philip 66 is one that we are working towards uh, getting on their network. Um, as far as processors and what we work with today, we're currently on the uh, first data format. Um, so with that being said, we're primarily in uh, unbranded first data sites. Uh, we will have unbranded Heartland sites coming up uh, by the end of uh, this month. And then following that, um, we're, we're starting on the branded certifications. Um, so what makes us once again different is we are talking directly to the processor from our device. Uh, so therefore, we uh, have to certify with each individual uh, processor because we do not take these credit card transactions uh, through devices like the Verifone Commander. Um, so as, as we work forward over the next six months, we're going to try to get on as many branded stores as possible. Um, Philips is probably the uh, top one on our radar, uh, as well as Sinclair um, and a few others that we've already uh, discussed and put into their labs and start some integrations. Um, I see that Valero's thrown out there. Uh, Valero, we have not uh, been able to uh, get into their lab yet to uh, start certifying with them, so they'll be a little further down the uh, down the route. And Concord. I am not familiar with it all, so I'll have to do a little research on that. Uh, Rod, Rod, if you'll leave your email address on here, I can uh, email you information uh, once I do some research on Concord to see if it could be an available option for us. That's great, I appreciate that. So just to kind of summarize real quick, um, our company is really looking to promote social distancing that, you know, obviously in this market, you know, we're really trying to go, you know, promote that and help by having just one person install, by having the contactless technology, by helping have a cost effective solution for these gas stations with six months away. Um, we, we really are, are, that's our main focus. We're, we're really looking to help out and sign up as many people as we can to be resellers and educate. We'd be happy to schedule a web presentation with you and go over things of everything from soup to nuts and our goal is to once we have you know the jobbers or the service technicians signed up as resellers or the isos is to identify a data is to find a site that has the first data bypass has one of the four core controllers that our solution works with and the pos you go through the wireless and we, we want to get it out there so that you could see it um and you know it's always good to see something in in the first person so with that i'll open up any questions and I'm also going to uh, launch a poll here that you can feel free to fill out at your disposal. We always like to hear feedback and, and learn and grow. So um, please feel free to um, unmute if you'd like to ask a question or type it, and I'm gonna launch a poll. Thank you so much. Any questions? I know it's a lot to take in. Uh, so we definitely, please feel free to reach out. We, on our website, soundpayments.com, you can reach out to us um, via email, eric.g at soundpayments.com or corey.s at soundpayments.com. We'd be happy to answer any questions and um, any team members that need to be looped in. Be happy. I have a question. Please. Oh, great. Um, Sitco and Sunoco. Is that are those? Do you know anything about them? Is that considered unbranded? Yeah. 
Corey, did you want to take that one? What was the question again? Sorry, I'm reading all the messages. Um, it's oh, no. is, uh, Sitco service stations and Sunoco, are those considered available right now? Uh, they are not. They're brand gas stations. So those are, if you are in, if you have those types of stations and you're interested, um, you can, like Eric said, you can contact either me or him. Um, right. We have contacts at both Sunoco and Sitco. Uh, we just need basically reasons to push those forward. Um, okay. Some stations give us those reasons. Um, so if right. you are interested in getting those, we can go back to Sunoco or Sitco. Uh, Sunoco Wonderful. should be an easy one for us, but we can go right. back to them with your stations and say, hey, we have your customer ready for our upgrades. Will you allow us on your network? Perfect. And then also my second question is, ballpark, what is a complete unit? I mean, what is the total buy rate for the hardware, software? I know there are being various monthly software fees, I'm assuming. Um, but just the hardware, like a ballpark cost for a four-pump uh, four station? Uh, so whenever we do the ballparks, we have many options out there. Uh, okay. So you have the card reader itself, uh, then you have a printer option. Um, we do have something we didn't mention in this. We do have digital receipts available on our units as well. Great. Um, and then we have the plastic kit option. Uh, but with everything, uh, with all the bells and whistles and features, I would say you'd be looking just, it does vary by pump type as well, but yep. uh, I would say you'd be looking under $1,200 uh, per pump base. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm so, so excited about this. This is great. I'll make sure to email you. Um, and the, it was great. I learned so much. Thank you so much. Okay. I've, I've received many messages from many of you um, that I probably won't get answered through chat. Um, so I'm going to post both mine and Eric's uh, emails to everybody in the chat. And y'all can email the two of us and we can. Uh, answer all these chat questions now if anybody wants to ask them directly on here you can as well uh terry yes it is ul approved we have the ul certifications on that and um i believe we can even share that if, if, you, if you wanted And then Sean asked, does the transaction run or still run over the major brand credit card network? So the site will still be charged by the major oil brand for the standard branded credit card fees. P PCI approved. Uh, yes, we are. Uh, so you can actually look up our PCI approval on First Data's website. Uh, I believe it's listed as the uh, Pax Q20 is the device on there. Um, but once again, since these are P2PE devices, uh, that's where we get our uh, certification through is directly from the uh, processors themselves. NBS, I have had initial conversations with them. Uh, I have not uh, had any gas stations with them at this point, so we have not pushed forward with NBS. Um, but NBS does have a high interest in integrating with us. Um, and they would be a relatively quick integration as well. Uh, we just need the uh, demand from uh, gas stations in order to do that. Paul, I don't understand your question. <laughs> P2P -E. All right, well, I think, I think what we'll do is, we've got a lot of great feedback here. We're getting a ton of questions. So what we'll do is, Go through a couple more and then we can follow up uh, with everybody we'll make sure to reach out to every single one of you um, and, and get you get your questions answered national bank card services yeah so we we had some initial conversations with national bank card um oh that's right nbs yep. yeah and yes we just haven't haven't had any demand for anything in bs yet and also for any opportunities please feel free to to share that with us and it would help uh, in, in every way to get some leverage for things that you know we're, we're working on so 
I'm, with that note, I'm going to close it out, everybody, and we appreciate you joining. Please stay safe out there and um, go to our website, downpayments.com, for some more information. Feel free to reach out to us, and um, thank you so much. Take care. Thank you, everybody.